Hey everybody, Ian from Novel Music here, and I've got a problem. I've got two different instruments here, a synth and an upright piano. And I want to create some music blending the two together using this arpeggiator here. But listen to what happens when I use the chain selector in live. So I've got one on each chain, as you can see, and an instrument rack. Because the synth has a longer release time, what ends up happening is I'm just feels like I'm using a mixer. It sounds like both instruments are playing all the time, all the notes, and we're just simply crossfading one to the other, which is essentially what's going on with the chain selector. However, I've created a new device here called Venn, which is inspired by the famous Venn diagram used in mathematics and the sciences. And in this device, there are two outputs an A, which I've used in this chain, and a B, which is here on this chain. I can algorithmically route incoming MIDI to one output or the other. To me, it's just a more organic result. That works well for uh, distributing MIDI. Here's a more complex example. We've got two tracks with piano and synth, and they both have the same instruments. However, they have different arpeggiator settings, but we have a piano on one chain and a synth on the other. And as you can see on each one of these chains, we've got an instance of Venn ready to route the MIDI. We also have a drum track, which has two different uh, drum sounds, an acoustic drum sound and a Roland CR78 drum sound, again using Venn to route it. So basically when the AB switch is all the way to A, we'll hear piano and acoustic drums. When it's all the way to the B, we'll hear electronic drums and synthesizer sounds. <laughs> Again, each note is allowed to decay. It's not faded down as it would be with the chain selector. Now let's see how we use Vin. I've got an instrument rack here with a synth sound and a wind patch. And I want to do this type of algorithmic routing of MIDI. So I'm going to drag two copies of Vin, one into this first chain and one into the second one. Now there's no limit to how many copies of N you can load on a single track, um, how many different chains you can use, and across tracks, in including the entire live set. The limit would be just your computer's processing power. So now that I've set this up, we need to assign output ports. If we don't do that, then I'm playing MIDI and you won't hear any sound. So let's put the synth uh, instrument on output A and the winds on output B. The next thing we need to decide is which one of these instances will control the other so that we don't have to manually change both um, chance controls here. Let's go with the synth one. So our options for control are simple. We just have track, meaning any copy of Venn on this track specifically, or the entire live set. I'll go with track and I hit control. And now when we look at the winds, copy of Venn, you see that the chance parameter can no longer be controlled, nor can we make any setting changes uh, to this area here. And when I change the chance control, the AB, you can see that it changes as well here. But just know that the other settings, including port assignment, the octave that it will sound in, and the chance that it will fire, those are all uh, controlled 
no matter what the state of the device is in, which is handy for getting even more intricate textures. <laughs> Let's look at one final example of using Venn. I've got a wavetable synth here, and I'm going to load a copy of Venn in front of it. Now, instead of blending between two different instruments, what I'd like to do is enable both ports. However, I'll have them sound in different octaves. In fact, maybe I'll get an arpeggiator going here so we can hear this better. So it creates an interesting variation. You can also change the uh, trigger behavior here. And that's the tutorial for Venn. This device is available for free at novelmusic.org. I hope you enjoy using it in your own productions. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.